Hi everybody and welcome to this revision video on psychopathy or antisocial personality disorder as part of the forensic psychology topic in Year 11 Psychology. So let's get started. So psychopaths or psychopathy is not a mental illness. It is classed as a personality disorder in the DSM-5, which I'll also talk about later in this video. So personality disorders in psychology are broadly defined as personalities that are outside the social norms and are associated with maladaptive behaviours, emotions and thoughts. So maladaptive means not adapting or not adjusting to the environment or situation as expected. So they sit outside the social norms or the norms of society, in other words, in terms of their behaviour, emotions and thoughts. So there are several personality disorders in the DSM-5. In this course, we've obviously focused on two, psychopathy or antisocial personality disorder being one, and narcissistic personality disorder, which I'll talk about in a separate video. So psychopathy features antisocial behaviours, a lack of empathy and remorse, and a lack of inhibition. So the main criteria for criminals with psychopathic tendencies or personality, they experience a low level of fear, and feelings of invincibility. So they feel that they are invincible and no one can touch them. Have an inability to control their impulses, so they're very, very quick to act and have low impulse control. And they use cruelty to gain control from others. So this could be psychologically, mentally, physically, or sexually. So there have been links determined between psychopathy and criminal activity, imprisonment and substance abuse. So substance abuse certainly fuels the psychopath's uh, criteria. There's also a very strong link between psychopathy and violence. So psychopaths are more likely to be in violence, uh, to be violent, sorry, and commit crimes in cold blood rather than as a reaction. So they will not have any emotional connection to the victim. They will kill them because they mean nothing to them because they are unable to feel emotions in a healthy way. Now, there's some evidence to suggest that genetics may play a role into the cause of psychopathy. So there's several theories as to the cause of how it develops, and there is some biological explanation, so some uh, the bio in the biopsychosocial model. So a lack of empathy has been found to be hereditary, and there is a gene called the warrior gene that is linked to aggression and violence. So on the studies that have been done on psychopaths, uh, the criminals that possess the warrior gene are far more common in those that did not display psychopathy and non-aggressive behaviours. Now, it's also very important to remember that just because a disorder is genetic doesn't mean that all related people will suffer, just that there's an increased likelihood. As we can see from this picture here, the prefrontal cortex of the brain in a psychopath is nowhere near as active as someone with without uh, psychopathy or antisocial personality disorder. This front part of the brain is responsible for uh, emotional control and decision making. So as we can see, it's very underdeveloped or not as active in a psychopath, which may then lead to the decisions that they make. Okay, now not only are there biological factors, there's also environmental factors that can contribute to an individual becoming uh, psychopathic. So in, such environmental factors can include having a convicted parent, being physically neglected in childhood, especially in the first two to five years of life, low involvement between father and son, low family income, uh, coming from a disrupted family with abuse or neglect, very, very harsh discipline style and poor treatment by peers or experiencing bullying in primary and or high school. So this relates to the socio part of the biopsychosocial model of behaviour. Now, diagnosing personality disorders is inherently difficult, but we use the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders in its fifth edition, so the DSM-5. So there should be a DSM-6 coming out in the next few years, hopefully. But this is a manual compiled by the American Psychiatrist Association that lists the symptoms and criteria of all mental health issues. So it's used by GPs, psychologists, obviously, psychiatrists, and other mental health professionals to assist in diagnoses of patients. It's also used in the law uh, area as well. So this leads to all medical practitioners diagnosing the same symptoms in the same way. So it in, ensures as much as possible consistency across, uh, across the board, especially in the Western world. 
Now, interestingly, psychopathy used to be listed, but it is now referred to as antisocial personality disorder. So that is actually the correct term for uh, psychopathy in the DSM-5. It's called antisocial personality disorder. Okay, so there is a checklist in the DSM-5 for antisocial personality disorder. So let's go through these. So repeated law breaking, deceitfulness or lying, impulsivity again, uh, irritable irritability and aggressiveness, reckless disregard of one's safety and that of others, irresponsibly irresponsibility as seen in unreliable employment history or not meeting financial obligations, a lack of remorse or empathy, evidence of conduct disorder before the age of 15 years old, need to be aged at least 18, so need to be a, a legal adult, that's the legal age in Australia, but need to be at least 18 years of age. Antisocial behaviour occurs outside episodes of schizophrenia or mania. So in some other mental health conditions, such as schizophrenia or mania, there may be violent behaviours, but that does not mean that people with schizophrenia have antisocial personality disorder. So we need to rule out other causes of the violent behaviour or the behaviours listed here um, and make sure that they're not attributed to schizophrenia or mania or something else. So you've all got this in a handout that I gave you in class, but this is the um, list of criteria as said from the DSM-5. So the actual definition of antisocial personality disorder, a pervasive pattern of disregard for and violation of the rights of others occurring since age 15 as indicated by three or more of the following. So there needs to be three or more in order for diagnosis to occur. So number one, failure to conform to social norms with respect to lawful behaviours as indicated by repeatedly performing acts that are grounds for arrest, so illegal behaviour in other words. Deception as indicated by repeated lying, use of aliases or conning others for personal profit or pleasure. Impulsive, impulsivity sorry, or failure to plan ahead. Irritability and aggressiveness as indicated by repeated physical fights or assaults. Reckless disregard for safety of self or others. Consistent irresponsibility is indicated by, again, repeated failure to, to sustain consistent work, behaviour or honour financial obligations. A lack of remorse is indicated by being indifferent to or rationalising having hurt, mistreated or stolen from another person. And the individual is at least 18 years of age. There's evidence of conduct disorder with onset before 15 years of age. And the occurrence, again, is not uh, is not exclusively during the course of another mental health condition such as schizophrenia or a manic episode. So in order for antisocial personality to be diagnosed, three of these criteria or more need to be present. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that is the revision video for psychopathy or antisocial personality disorder. I hope you found this useful. Any questions, let me know. Otherwise, happy revising.